tuning in now on Facebook Live. We thank you so much. We ask that you would just click and share with others and that they will come and be a part of this great worship experience today. For certainly we are prepared to do a great thing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. Hallelujah. So are you ready? Are you ready to worship the Lord this morning. At this time, we're getting ready to go into this worship experience, and uh, uh, the Reverend uh, Edwin Davis will come and give us our call to worship and also our prayer and scripture, followed by the participation of Reverend George Sims, who will do our offertory as well as our intercessory prayer. We are happy and happy in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Come on, let's worship the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Would you please stand for the call to worship? I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wicked. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Planted in the house of the Lord, they flourish in the courts of our God. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, 
all of the earth sing praise. Let us make a joyful noise as we sing this great hymn of the church. I have a message from the Lord. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. The message unto you I'll give. Tis recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Look and live, O oh sinner, live. Look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live without further lying. Message from the Lord. Hallelujah. The message unto you, I'll worship this day we come God thanking you for you are our father and you watch over us each and every day hour and minute as your loving children and oh God for that we are so thankful 
God, you brought us from one week to another. Sometimes, God, we were careless and going about our own way and didn't even acknowledge you, but God, because of your mercy, <laughs> you kept us, God, and uh, for that we say thank you. God, we thank you for those who have assembled in this house of worship today and those who are listening by various means. We ask, God, that you would bless and touch them and that they would be blessed through this service. Father God, we just ask that the praises would be lifted up. And God, we know that the blessings will come down and we claim them in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you. So God, let every word that's said, every prayer, the preach word, the scripture, God, the music, and all those, Lord, who will participate in this service, we ask God that you would anoint us, that you would fill us with your spirit. Let us put aside self and let it all be in glorifying you. Oh, Father, be glorified in this service today. We love you, Lord. We magnify your name. We praise you, God, for you alone are worthy. And if we had 10,000 tongues, Father, we just couldn't thank you enough. But we praise and glorify you in this service, Lord. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh. scripture today is from 1 Samuel chapter 30 verses 1 through 8. Again that's 1 Samuel chapter 30 beginning at verse 1. Three days later and I'm sorry I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Three days later when David and his men arrived home at their town at Ziglag they found that the Amalekites had made a raid into Negev and Ziklag. They had cursed Ziklag and burned it to the ground. They had carried off the women and children and everyone else, but without killing anyone. When David and his men saw the ruins and realized what had happened to their families, they wept until they could not weep anymore. David's two wives, Ahinoel from Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal from Carmel, were among those captured. David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters, and they began to talk of stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Then he said to Abathar, the priest, bring me the ephod. So Abathar brought it. Then David asked the Lord, should I chase after this band of raiders 
Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, Yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. Amen. The word of God for the people of God from all that dwell. <laughs> Scripture. From all that dwell them you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart your soul and all your mind this is the first and great commandment the second is like unto it you shall love your neighbors as yourself on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets Father. And to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Good morning again, everybody. Thank God for you and thank God for this worship experience today. Today marks uh, our pastor's and first lady anniversary for 16 years as the pastor of the Great Quinn Chapel AME Church. And we are so delighted to be here. And so I'm going to invite my wife Jennifer to come up so that we can share here together our great acknowledgments to you all. Uh, Quinn, you are such an outstanding congregation. Your loving support and your dependability and always working with your pastor, praying for both the pastor and first lady. And we just cannot thank you enough. We thank God for giving us this great opportunity to serve you. And your response to us is so overwhelming. Uh, that words are very limited to express the depth of our gratitude. Uh, we feel so empowered uh, to be the leaders of this congregation and what a ship of Zion that God has given us. And so we thank you so much for 16 encouraging years. To God be the glory. I'd just like to take this time to thank the officers and all of the members, the ministerial staff that is so dedicated, the musicians, the ushers at the door, and all of the um, heads of the committees that work so hard here at Quinn. And the only thing I can say this morning is that had not been Amen. for the Lord on our side, Amen. where would we be? Amen. Thank you, and I love you from the bottom of my heart. Amen. Amen. So we want to thank the, the Board of Stewards, Board of Trustees, the committee, uh, the ministry leaders, of course, our solid clergy team, and uh, our musicians who are so steadfast in all that they do, the choirs. And we want to thank our young people. Uh, they have been so uh, exceptional in, in what they have done in matriculating here at Quinn Chapel and the great men and women that they have blossomed to become. We want to thank our staff, uh, Yolanda White and uh, Cassandra for putting together a, a video of appreciation uh, from you all. And certainly, uh, we just want to thank every, everyone for, for we just cannot say how much we are grateful to be here. And you know, time passes fast, I'm telling you. 16 years seemed like it was just a few years, but my God, we thank you so much. Thank you. That's because you have been such a good congregation. You've made it so smooth for us. 
that 16 years was like putting on some ice skates, uh, shoes, and just sky, skiding, uh, sliding all through 16 years of joy and gratitude. Thank you. And may God continue to smile upon you and give you your choices blessing. To God be the glory. Amen. Let me also encourage everyone to get out and vote, to get out and vote, get out and vote. And you can see that people are determined to do so. And we just don't want to miss your vote because your vote is very important. Uh, also, I want to make this acknowledgement, uh, Brother Randy Vanderveer. I think this is the first Sunday in 16 years that he has uh, been absent due to an illness. And so we want to pray for Brother Randy Vanderveer uh, because he is steadfast and uh, unmovable, and he's always to hear. And so this is the first Sunday in 16 years that I can recall that he is not present today. So let us pray for his illness and that he will recuperate very, very quickly. And beloved, we want you to be mindful of our Bible study on Wednesday night uh, at 6.30 p.m. And you can call the church office for the dial-in. They will be emailing it out to you. Let us now continue in worship as we prepare ourselves for giving for the Lord is a giving God and we respond back to him by giving and sowing seed into his kingdom here at Quinn Chapel and elsewhere. And so we want you to now to tune in, those of you who are on, on Facebook Live or YouTube, uh, to uh, uh, go to our website and you can give your contribution or you can go to our text, you'll see it scrolling and by giving, and you can con contribute by that way as well. But it's time now to give unto the Lord. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. Will a man rob God? Yet, you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty might be made rich. All things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own. time now for, for intercessory prayer. And what's in my heart is just to speak a word of encouragement to your heart. You know, it was a time when, when David was so discouraged, he couldn't find encouragement in anyone or anything. But the Bible said he encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. You know, one of the ways you encourage yourself in the Lord is by going to God's word and seeing what he says about your situation is. You know, I know some of you have situations that you've been told are hopeless, that there's no hope for you, but I've got good news for you. There's nothing too hard for God. 
and what he said he'll do, and what he's spoken he will bring to pass. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to be according to your faith and your words of confession. Even as we sung the song, it says, "'Twas believing in his holy name." The name of Jesus is so powerful that every knee in heaven, on earth, and under the earth has to bow its knee. But see, what makes it happen is, it's the name and your faith in the name. You know, during men's ministry yesterday, I heard one brother talk about the name of Jesus, and he said, it's like having nuclear codes that are sent to a nuclear sub. See, the authority to fire the weapon comes from speaking the word of authorization. And when you speak the name of Jesus in your situation, the nuclear powers of heaven are unleashed. But you've got to speak the name and have faith in the name when you speak it. So just want to encourage you to go to the word of God and every promise you see there, replace thou or they with your name. And as you do that, think about the woman with the issue of blood. Twelve years, no hope, but when she went to Jesus and touched the hem of his garment, she was healed. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did for her, he will do for you. Would you bow your hearts before the Lord, please? Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this day, Lord. Father God, we thank you that you loved us so much, Father, that you gave your son Jesus, Lord. Lord God, the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. But Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that when Jesus was on the cross, Lord God, he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that every sin, Lord God, that we ever have committed or will commit was in the body of Jesus, Father. But Lord God, we also thank you that every sickness and disease, Lord God, was in Jesus' body, Lord. For he became sick with our sicknesses, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that diabetes, Lord God, and cancer, Lord God, and heart conditions, Lord God, were all in the body of Jesus, Lord God. And therefore, Father God, we are healed, Lord God, by the stripes of Jesus, Lord God. Therefore, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we bring every sickness, Lord God, every disease, Lord God, every infirmity, Lord God, and we lay it, Lord God, at the base of the cross, Lord God. And Lord God, we believe right now, Lord God, that every man, woman, boy, and girl is healed right now in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We believe that cancers are bowing their knee, Lord God, to the name of Jesus, Lord. We believe diabetes is bowing its knee, Lord God, to the name of Jesus, Lord God. We believe that mental disorders, Lord God, are bowing their knee to the name of Jesus, Lord. Father God, we thank you that all your promises are amen, yes, and amen, Father God. Therefore, Father God, I believe that your people have received these blessings, Lord, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, I ask that you'll encourage their hearts, Lord God, because your word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Lord. I ask that you'll encourage them, Lord God, to dig deep into your word, Lord God, through the sermon that they're going to hear, Lord God, that they'll dig deep, Lord, through Bible study, Lord God, they'll dig deep, Father God. Through church school, Lord God, they'll dig deep, Lord God. Through daily meditation, Lord God, and daily devotionals, they'll dig deep into your word, Lord. And as they go into your word, Lord God, they will find you in the midst of their situation, Lord. And they'll know, Lord God, that you have a plan for them, Lord God, a plan for good, not for evil, to give them a perfect end, Father. Now, Lord, we thank you for our pastor, Lord God. We speak life over him, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for he and Sister Jennifer, Lord God, for the 16 years you've given us, Lord God, together with them, Lord. We speak life and blessings, Lord God, healing and protection, Lord God, over them in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. 
Lord God, we ask that you'll encourage their hearts, Lord God, that they grow not weary in well-doing, Lord God, for they shall reap, Lord God, because they will not faint, Father God. Now, Lord God, we ask that you'll bless their family, Lord God. We thank you for their family, Lord God, and for them giving them to us, Lord God. Now, Father, we ask, Lord God, that you'll pour out a special anointing on our pastor, Lord, so that we will receive a word that comes from you, Lord God, for we know that one word, Lord God, from you will change our whole lives, Lord. We lay our hearts open, Lord God, as good soil, Lord, that your seed will fall deep, Lord God, and prosper in our hearts, Lord, that the word we hear today, Lord God, we will become, because we're not only hearers of the word only, we're doers of the word, Father. We thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace, and Lord God, we commit to walk by faith and not by sight, Lord. Lord God, we thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. From the very beginning, Lord, you created me to worship you. From the very beginning, oh Lord, Lord, you created me to worship you. Do you believe that this morning? That you're just not here by happenstance. But he created you special. Something about your worship is different from mine, but we all worship him. Help me sing the song. From the very beginning, Lord, you From the, from the very beginning, Lord, Lord, you created me to worship. How do you worship us? By saying hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Hallelujah. I adore you. I adore you. Lord, you created me to worship you. Lord, you created me to worship you. I'll try to From the very beginning. Oh, Lord, you created me to worship you. Lord, from the very beginning, Lord, you created me to worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Do you love him? Morning, yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. And I praise you. your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I, I adore you. you. Yes, I do. Lord, you created me to worship you. 
created me to worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much, praise team, reminding us that the Lord has created us to worship him. That is a part of our main existence is to worship him. And I thank God because he has been so bountifully good to my life. Thank him for the team that he has hooked up with Mrs. Wright and myself, who has been a rock for me in a weary land. So I thank God for her. And uh, she's always encouraging me and praying for me and doing all of those wonderful things that uh, spouses should do. For each other. Amen. In this environment that we're living in, there's a lot of discouragement. There are discouragements with the pandemic of the coronavirus that has affected us in so many ways. There is the discouragement of the injustices that we see in this country, especially with black and brown people. There is the discouragement the operation that we see that is coming from our governmental officials. And there's a sweeping discouragement that we see that is going around throughout the world. And so today I want to address this fever, this disease called discouragement. From 1 Samuel chapter 30, I'm going to read verses 3, 4, and 6. When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. Verse 6, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found encouragement in the Lord. That word encouragement is also translated strength. David found encouragement in the Lord. So today I want to talk about winning the battle of discouragement. Winning the battle. It is winnable. One of the most dreaded disease in the world is one that we wouldn't list as a dreaded disease. As a matter of fact, we probably wouldn't even mention it at all. Yet it is as prevalent as the common cold. 
As a matter of fact, it is more prevalent than the common cold. One of the most deadliest disease in the world is discouragement. As a matter of fact, it is the most common of all diseases that exist. Why is that, Pat? Because all of us get discouraged. There is no one who doesn't become discouraged regardless of age. Discouragement is universal. Discouragement is a potent disease because of its recurring nature. You see, we can become discouraged a number of times throughout the day, a week, a month. It's not just a one-time thing and we become immune from it. Furthermore, discouragement is highly contagious. Other people can become discouraged because you are discouraged. Our discouragement can have a reciprocal effect upon us and upon others. There are several reasons why we become discouraged. One reason is becoming fatigued. We simply work ourselves to exhaustion. We just become plain worn out physically, mentally and emotionally drained. And fatigue is a major cause of discouragement. It, it, it usually happens right about the midpoint mark, when we are only halfway to getting something done. And we are so burnt out, and we start saying to ourselves, shall I keep going on? I don't know if I can continue, but the project has to be done. Another reason why we become discouraged is because of frustration. We become frustrated when there is so much rubbish in our lives that waste our time, consume our energy, and keep us from becoming all we can become. Also, failure. Failure is another reason why we become discouraged. When setbacks and coming up empty on a goal can cause us to lose heart, confidence, and become discouraged. Then there is the fact that things are not turning out the way we thought it would. It's the feeling that things should be better than they are right now. <laughs> the people around us should be better than they are. Our children should be better than they are. Circumstances should be better than they are. Relationships should be better than they are. Our finances should be better than they are. And you know what? <laughs> You're probably right. Things should be better than they are, but they are not. And so we end up becoming discouraged because things are not what we thought they should be. Here's the question. Is there an antibody, a vaccine that we can take that will cure us of our discouragement? Well, I haven't heard of such medication being on the market for public use yet. But what I have discovered is a story in the Bible that addresses the discouragement disease. It's located in 1 chap Samuel chapter 30. The biblical story is about David, the giant killer, becoming a fugitive, living the life of a wilderness exile for his own survival and the survival of his ragtag men. David partners with the enemy king of Akish of Gath to protect him from King Saul of Israel. King Saul was hunting David down like a wanted fugitive. 
So David hooked up with the king of Gath to conduct raids on Israel's villages and towns. However, David will conduct the raids, but not on the Jewish town as he was pretending, but on the Philistine town. The Amalekites, they got notice of what David was doing and took out their revenge on him and his men. So one day, while David and his men were with King Achish of Aphak, the Amalekites took out their revenge against David by raiding his camp, taking their wives and daughters and sons into captivity. When David and his 600 men arrived back at Ziklag, they discovered that their camp had been burned and their families taken away. These brave warriors who were relentless and fearless fighters, the Bible says that they all wept aloud until they had no more strength left to weep. They began to talk among themselves about stoning David to death because of the capture of their family. The very people who looked up to David as a guide and a friend and a leader are ready now to stone him to death. David, in the midst of all of this, had reached a point where he was so down the ladder of despair that he'd reached the bottom rung. David was greatly distressed, greatly discouraged, in despair, the lowest of his life. But then the Bible says, although David was in the bottomless pit of life. He encouraged himself in the Lord. David offers us what we can do when we become discouraged. As bad as things may be in our lives that's fueling our discouragement, David reminds us that there is still hope to find encouragement. However, if we're going to overcome our disappointment, then there are three things that are required of us to find encouragement in the Lord. One thing that we must do to encourage ourselves is to regroup, regroup, regroup. David had just won a string of spectacular military victories. But when he returned from the battle and found his camp destroyed by the Amalekites and his family taken away, captive, he was heart sick. It was at this point that David had to regroup to determine his next move. In order to regroup about his next move, it predicated upon the fact how he talked to himself. David needed to talk to himself in the right way in order to do the right thing, to find encouragement in the Lord. One of the greatest lessons that we can ever learn is how do we talk to ourselves in the midst of a crisis? What we say to other people is important, but what we say to ourselves is far more important. It's good to learn how to speak in public, but it's better to learn how to talk to ourselves. You recall, the woman with the issue of blood who touched Jesus' garment and she was made whole. Her healing was predicated on the fact of how she talked to herself because the Bible says that she said to herself, if I may touch the hem of his clothes, I shall be made whole. Don't miss the fact that her blessing came by the fact that it says that for she said to herself. As a matter of fact, she could have talked herself out of her blessing. After she had suffered repeated disappointment, it would have been easy for her to tell herself there is no hope. She could have become bitter instead of better. Her better was realized due to the fact of how she talked to herself. My brothers and sisters, when life is going badly for us, how do we talk to ourselves? Do we develop self-pity and reach the point of enjoying our circumstances? In our regrouping, we have to learn how to talk to ourselves in the right way. Don't let the what ifs torment us when we are refocusing. What if I get hurt or become ill? 
Uh, what if the company downsizes and I lose my job? What if people don't like or accept me? What if I can't find someone to love me? What if, if I end up alone? The Bible calls this imagination. We are imagining the worst case scenario. Paul says, cast it down. For if we don't, we'll live in dread concerning these things that haven't happened yet and may not ever happen to us. If we don't think God can turn our situation around, he probably won't turn it around. We have to learn how to talk and to look for the best in every situation. Don't you know there's some good in every situation? No matter what we are going through. Oh, myself, my brothers and sisters, we got to regroup and keep the right attitude. And we can find something good about our situation. This is what we must do. That when we are in our predicament of, of feeling discouraged, we must fill our minds with some God thoughts. God thoughts will fill our minds with faith, hope, and victory. God thoughts will build us up and encourage us. They will give us the strength to keep on keeping on. So if we're going to win the battle of discouragement, then we must recruit by keeping our minds on God thoughts. And when you put your mind on God's thoughts, then you can speak to yourself what God is speaking and what God is speaking to you will help you to lift up your countenance and be able to rise and raise yourself up beyond the despair and discouragement because God's word will not allow you to stay down. God's word will not allow you to have a self-pity party. God's word will not allow you to feel discouraged because there's so much life in God's word. There's so much hope in God's word. There's so much victory in God's word. So the next time you feel like you cannot rise above your discouragement, open the Bible and look and listen to the word of God because there's encouragement in the word of God. That's what David did. David said, I got to recruit myself. I'm so down. I don't want to stay down anymore. I'm discouraged, but I don't want to discourage anymore. So I got to talk to my mind. I got to say some good positive thing to my mind. I cannot allow myself to live like this in discouragement because discouragement is a thief and a robber. It robs me of the joy of living today. It robs me of the peace that I should have within myself. It robs me of the victory that I should be walking in because Jesus Christ did not give us defeat, but Jesus Christ gave us victory because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. So my brothers and sisters, you got to learn how to regroup and talk to yourself in the right way and put some God thoughts in your mind. Another thing we must do to win the battle of discouragement, not only do we have to regroup, we have to refocus. We have to refocus. We have to refocus. Re when David and his men arrived back to their camp, <laughs> and discovered that the Amalekites destroyed it, captured the wives and the children. They dropped to the ground and wept loudly and openly. And the Bible says, until they couldn't weep anymore. I don't know if you've been there. That you cried so long that you didn't even have any more tears to shed. Notice now that David did not stay down. When David was brought down to his knees, he looked up and inquired of the Lord. In other words, David was preparing himself to react according to what instruction the Lord would give him. David reached upward because he knew his help was there. He could not look horizontal because they were talking about stoning him to death. So the only place he could look was to look upward. 
it, 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 it's, 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 it's like he refocused uh, on that line in his words in the 121st Psalm, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills where my help comes. In other words, if David was going to encourage himself, then he had to refocus his faith on the promises of God. Whatever words God was to give him, he was going to believe it and live it. The person now without God has to feel the role of God in his or her own life. Let me say that one more time. The person without God has to feel the role of God in his or her own life. Now, that may be okay in good time, but what about malignant sales, faulty heartbeats, layoff at work, home foreclosure, and phone calls that bring bad news in the wee hours of the morning? To whom do you turn then, my Lord, when our lives change so abruptly? Where can we turn in such moments? Dark days calls for us to refocus ourselves and call upon the name of the Lord because the Bible said the Lord is our light and our salvation whom shall we fear disappointment aren't a reason to run away they are reason to turn a different way did I hear you out there I need to repeat that one more time <laughs> that disappointment aren't a reason to run away they are a reason to turn a different way Stop the madness of our own assumptions and assessments. Turn a different way. Regroup yourself. Refocus yourself. Trust God beyond what our eyes can see. Allow his word to steady us and hold us together when circumstances are falling apart. Hold on to the fact what God says. This is what the Lord says to us. He said, now listen. Your discouragement or your weeping may endure for a night, but your joy is coming in the morning. Uh, uh, it's what he's trying to tell us that if you want to be encouraged, look in the mirror today and declare to yourself that this too shall pass. Do I have a witness out there? Come on now. Don't leave me up here standing by myself. I know there's a few witnesses out there who can declare I've been there. I've experienced it. I've seen the hand of God working in my life. And I've come by to tell you, those of you who may not be where I am right now, you may be in the field in the front of discouragement, but I come by to tell you as a witness that this too shall pass. I was there before. You can tell them. Go on and testify. Say, I know what passes talking about I was there I mean I was so down I didn't know I could get any further down I was in a place that I never been before I was in a place that I never thought I ever end up I was so discouraged don't despond so despair that I didn't even know how to get up but I come out and tell you the word is true that weeping may endure for a night I mean I cried some tears I shed some tears I even got to the point that all I could do was open my mouth and words could not even even come out but I'm telling you there is a resurrection day that God can raise you up even when you can't raise yourself up do I have a witness out there and can you testify that this too shall pass how many of you have gone through something and then you got out of that position and then you went through another something that was darker than the first one you went to but God lifted you up and brought you right out of it and how many times have you gone in and out of stuff but God brought you out of it every step of your journey. And so you can testify that I may be down now, but the Lord I serve, he's well able to lift me up out of my discouragement. I'm telling you, this too shall pass. I don't care what it is. I don't care how dark it is. I don't care how painful it is. This too shall pass. What are you talking about, Reverend? They said unto me that I only have six months to live, but I come by to tell you, this this too shall pass because if you don't live, God has a better place with your name on it. It's called glory. This too shall pass. It will pass. It will pass. 
So refocus. 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 And so my brothers and sisters, not only should we, hallelujah, regroup, learning how to talk to ourselves. Not only should we refocus our sights, but one last thing we must do to win this battle of discouragement is resolve to press on. Resolve to press on. Here it is in, the, in our lesson today. The Bible says that David inquired of the Lord. Saying, shall I pursue this troop? That is the troop that had captivated his family. Shall I overtake them? And the Lord answered him, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Press on. Ah, you shall overtake it. And without fail, you shall recover all. David, humiliated, self condemned, looking on to the future, not knowing what's best to do took heart by casting his burden on the Lord, seeking God's direction as to the future. He cried out to God, what shall I do? God's response was, press on. If we're going to win the battle of discouragement, then we must Allow our discouragement to draw us nearer to God and not away from God. And our discouragement should draw us near to God by developing a trust in God and earnestly looking for his guidance to face the future. It is not our discouragement to draw us near to God so that God can hold us in his arm and rock us to sleep. No, no. Draw us near to God so that it can develop a trust in God and earnestly looking for his guidance to face the future. God is willing to hear our cry, but he's also willing to give us a permanent spiritual advantage for our present anguish. Did you hear what I said? He is willing to give us some spiritual advantage for our present predicament. Therefore, we can hope in God when all else fails. In other words, let, let God, you got to let God be God in your life. You, you got to let God be God in your life. Therefore, you got to step back and let God take control. And, and, and we must resolve within ourselves that when we let God be God in our lives, all right, and, 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 and we, that is that we're turning our lives into the hand of God who's going to determine our future. And so if we're going to put and trust in God, we don't worry about where we are going to fall or fall short or whatever the case may be. We don't think about our discouragement. No, no. Because we are putting ourselves and our trust in the hand of God. And therefore, when we do that, we must resolve within ourselves to press on in spite of our discouragement. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Now, I said you got to press on 
in spite of our discouragement. That doesn't mean that when you, when you, when you allow your discouragement to draw you closer to God, that your discouragement is going to evaporate right away. No, you, you still may have the predicament going on and stewing in your life, but you got to learn how to press on in spite of your circumstances. You see, our bodies and minds and spirits were not created to live stretches of time in discouragement. Because discouragement is a fatal thing to the body and mind and spirit that God has placed in us. And if we soak ourselves in, in the midst of discouragement, I guarantee you, you're going to have some physical condition that's going to affect you. And it's going to also affect you emotionally because you're going to feel so depressed that you're going to major and see your life and walk that way. And when you are a depressed person you got to watch out because you can become an angry person and so that's why God never made us to have depression and discouragement to become the one that envelops us and calls us to live a discouraged life so we have to dig deep I mean we got to dig deep within ourselves to rise from the pit of discouragement and to move forward trusting God to lead us to a better place mentally spiritually and physically that's what you got to do because even if the situation has not disappeared in your life what you got to do is you got to seek God out get me to a better place in the midst of my situation get my mind to a better place get my spirit to a better place and get me physically into a better place and that if I can get my mind in a better place then I can be like the woman with the issue of blood all I got to do is just touch the hem of his garment and I shall be made home now the enemy of our mind he would not like it the enemy of our mind will try to convince us that we don't have what it takes but God says we do have what it takes and so the question is who are you gonna listen to are you gonna listen to the circumstances which is the foundation in the field of the enemy and so when you look at your situation that's the enemy speaking back to you so who are you gonna listen to are you gonna listen to God are you gonna listen to the enemy who's speaking back to you and telling you the things that you cannot do but God says you do have what it takes the enemy will say to us that you are not able to succeed but God says you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength the enemy will say to us you will never get out of debt but God says not only are you gonna get out of debt you will lend and not borrow the enemy will say to us you will never amount to anything but God says he will raise you up and make your life significant the enemy will say to us your problems are too big there is no hope but God says he will solve those problems moreover he will turn those problems around and use them for your good the enemy will say to us it is impossible but God says to us with me all things are possible the enemy will say to us we are too exhausted to press on but God says wait on me and I shall renew your strength the enemy will say to us nobody loves me but God says I have loved you with an everlasting love the enemy will say to us you cannot go on but God said my grace is sufficient for you the enemy will say to us you don't know what to do but God said I direct you and order your step the enemy will say to us you cannot forgive yourself but God said you can because I already have the enemy will say to us you cannot make ends me but God says to us I will supply all of your needs the enemy will say to us you are too afraid to press on but God says to us I didn't give you a spirit of fear but a power in a sound mind the enemy will say to us you are not smart enough but God said I give 
you my wisdom. The enemy will say to us, you always be alone. But God says to us, I will never leave you, nor shall I forsake you. The enemy will say to us, it's not worth it. But God says to us, it will be. Just press on and keep your hand in my hand. So tell the enemy, I've been down too long. I've wept too many tears. I've given depression too many days of my life. I've given in too quickly. I've locked my hurts deep down within me. I've wasted a lot of time feeling sorry for myself. I've been fighting with myself and coming up empty. But today, tell the enemy, no more. No more weeping. No more self-pity. No more getting down on myself. Right now, I'm going to ride. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I homeward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready to press on to see what the end's going to be. I'm ready to lift on to a better life and a better place. I'm ready to press on to a higher standard and a higher place. I need somebody who's ready to rise, to rise out of your stupor of discouragement. God is waiting for you. Pack up your bag and walk out of it. Walk out of it. It's time to move with confidence to higher dimension for yourself. The battle is not mine, but it is the Lord. It's time to pack your bags. <laughs> move out of discouragement with confidence. <laughs> and the Bible said the Lord will make a way what? Somehow. Is there a witness out there? Is there a witness out there? So we can win the battle of discouragement. But we must regroup. We've got to learn how to talk to ourselves. Are you talking defeat or are you talking victory? We've got to refocus. We've got to refocus on the word of God. Get some God thoughts in our mind. And are you ready? Do you have the resolve to press on? Because weeping may endure for a night. Get ready for your joy because it's coming. It's coming in the morning. My brothers and sisters, I know we're going through some uncharted waters. We may not know how to navigate our emotions and our human spirit through this maze that we're in. But you don't have to try to figure it out. I sincerely believe that we have given the White House and Congress too much power in our minds. That we have come to the point that they are more like God than God himself. Could it be that God is watching us trying to help us to see who is your God is the pandemic of coronavirus your God do you spend more time focusing upon it is Trump your God do you spend more time focusing upon him who is your God? The Lord said, I am the Lord your God. And besides me, 
you should not have another. I am a jealous God. brothers and sisters are watching if you have not accepted Christ as your Savior here's a good time to do so just confess Lord I have lived my life without you in my heart in my mind and my thoughts but today God I want you I want you to take the steering wheel of my heart, my mind, and pull me through life. I'm holding it on to my hand. I confess that Jesus died for my sins. And I'm willing to accept what he did for me at Calvary. I'm, I know I must take baby steps and everything is not going to be rosy but I'm willing to walk where you lead me. And after a while, God, as you continue to develop me, I'll stop walking and I'll start running. And then now, as you keep taking me down the road, I'll stop walking, I'll stop running, and then I'll stop leaping. I'll start leaping for the joy of my understanding. And if you just do that in your heart, I want you to Reach out to us, call us at 513-825-4900. If you need prayer today, we want to pray for you as well. You can call our number and we will be praying for you. But we want you to remain encouraged, regardless of what it is. Because when you think that you can't change the situation, and the situation can only be changed by you, you will become discouraged. If you think, I can't change my child, I can't turn, no, you can't. But I know who's able. God is always able. And he's willing and ready to turn your situation around. So in the name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord, for this day, and may God continue to bless you, that you will find his wonders throughout this week. Because God has something special for you throughout this week. He got something special for you. Said the Lord, please open my eyes so I can see it, and my ears so I can hear it. Because I want it, and I need it, and I'm looking for it. I got a special blessing that's coming my way, and I'm going to get it this week. The devil is a liar. He's not going to keep me looking at things that's going to distract me and keep me from looking at what the Lord has for me. I'm going to open my eyes and see it. I'm looking. I'm like a periscope. I'm just moving around looking for my blessing. It's on the way. It's on the way. In Jesus' name, amen. I have asked the choir to sing um, this praise team. Excuse me. And um, Jennifer and my and Marcus and Fred Jr., our gratitude to God and to this congregation. And, uh, and it's a simple song by Walter Hawkins. It's called, Thank You, Lord, for all that you've done for me. And so I want to thank Quinn Chapel Church for 16 years of service. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you. Come on. Come on, praise team. Tragedies are commonplace, hey. all kinds of diseases, people are slipping away, the economy is down, people can't get enough pay, but hide from me, oh. Oh. Out on the streets And the drug habits Some say They just can't be There's muggers and robbers No 
protection every day. 